Hello everyone, my name is Vittorio Scardacci from the University of Catania in Italy and I will present a work on generation of laser pulses by silver nanoplate based saturable absorbers. This work was carried out in collaboration with Beihang and Tsinghua University in China, the University of Messina in Italy and the University of Cambridge in the UK. This is the outline of my presentation. So after a brief introduction on pulsed lasers and how they work, I will uh, present uh, the synthesis and characterization of silver nanoplates. Then I will describe our uh, fiber laser setup and the results. And then I will draw the conclusions. Ultrafast lasers typically achieve pulse generation by mode locking or Q-switching. Pulse durations range from microseconds to femtoseconds. The applications of such lasers are multiple, for example, in communications, medicine, spectroscopy, industrial processes, just to name a few. All these type of lasers use a saturable absorber. Saturable absorption is a process where materials become more transparent as radiation intensity increases. So what happens within a material is that as the radiation hits the material, carriers are promoted to an excited energy level. <clears throat> as more radiation hits the material, more carriers get promoted until upper energy levels fill up. When this happens, uh, excess radiation is no longer absorbed by the material and goes through. In, in this case, the material becomes transparent to excess radiation. So what happens when a saturable absorber is present in a laser cavity is that as the radiation spikes are suppressed if they are low intensity, while higher intensity spikes are enhanced, amplified and compressed, giving rise to a short and high intensity laser pulses. Commercial saturable absorbers at the moment are mainly semiconductor saturable absorber mirrors, which are complex and very expensive devices. Over the years, nanomaterials have been proposed as viable alternatives to systems. Uh, in fact, carbon nanotubes, graphene and other 2D materials have been successfully uh, demonstrated as saturable absorbers to produce mode locked pulses. Here in this work, we present for the first time silver nanoplates uh, as saturable absorbers, uh, which enjoy easy processing and no need of purification. Silver nanoplates are flat, triangular in shape, with sharp, cut or rounded ends. They are 50 to 200 nanometers wide and 10 to 40 nanometers thick. Their optical properties depend on their shape and size and the external environment. In particular, very important is the refractive index of the medium, but also molecular absorption on the surface can modify uh, their optical properties. And last but not least, they show saturable absorption. A synthesis of uh, silver nanoplates happens through a two-step process, which is called seed mediated growth. The first step is the synthesis of spherical nanoparticles. Uh, this starts from uh, silver ions in solution, uh, uses a strong reducing agent like sodium boron hydride and also uses citrate and uh, cold temperature. The second step is the conversion into flat nanoplates. This happens uh, with hydrazine and citrate. In this second step, spherical nanoparticles are converted into triangular nanoplates. This second step is a critical one for achieving size and shape control. Here we discuss the optical properties of silver nanostructures. The red curve represents a typical absorption spectrum of spherical silver nanoplates obtained after the first step of the process. Spherical particles show an arrow plasmon resonance just below 400 nanometers. The blue curve is a representative absorption spectrum of flat silver nanoplates obtained at the end of the process. 
we observe that the plasmon resonance is broader and red shifted with respect to the initial spherical particles. We also observe a new feature around 340 nanometers, which is an indication of an isotropy in the structure and suggests the presence of flat particles. The plasmon resonance position of silver nanoplates can be controlled by controlling heterozygous addition rate or controlling the concentration of spherical nanoparticles obtained after the first step of the process, which are the seeds. In our case, we use a very slow addition rate and an addition time long enough to allow the process to completion. Using a lower concentration of seeds, we obtain larger particles with a plasmon resonance redshifted into the near infrared and a high aspect ratio. While using a higher seed concentration, we obtain smaller particles with a plasmon resonance in the visible range. Here we can observe some SEM and TEM images of our silver nanoplates. Uh, these images confirm the triangular shape of uh, our nanoplates and uh, the sides ranging between 100 and 200 nanometers. The nonlinear optical properties can be tested by the Z scan technique. The technique consists of focusing a laser beam with a lens and scanning a sample across the focus position. In this way, the sample experiences a higher and higher energy by getting closer to the focus. And by measuring the amount of transmitted radiation as a function of the Z position, we get a sort of power dependent measurement. In our case, we use a 532 nanometer pulsed laser with a pass duration in the nanosecond range and the silver nanoplate solution with a broad plasmon resonance just above 600 nanometers. The Z-scan experiment shows a strong increase in transmittance near the focus, which confirms the strong saturable absorption behavior of the material. The nonlinear optical properties can also be measured by power-dependent transmittance measurement. In this case, we use a one micron pulsed laser with pulse duration in the picosecond uh, range. In this case, a laser beam is uh, <coughs> split 95% to our silver nanoplate saturable absorber uh, inserted in the fiber connector and 5% to a, a second power meter as a reference. In, also, in this case, we notice an increase in transmission by increasing the fluence of the laser. Silver nanoplates can be integrated into an optical fiber by optical deposition. This is a process in which a fiber end is dipped into a silver nanoplate solution for 30 minutes and irradiated with a continuous wave laser at 1550 nanometers with a power of 60 milliwatts. What we obtain at the end is the deposition of our silver nanoplate material onto the fiber core. Here is our laser setup. This is a ring cavity fiber laser. The pump is a diode laser at 976 nanometers and the gain medium is an iterbium doped fiber which gives a wavelength around a micron. Part of the cavity is a fiber connector where our silver nanoplates are deposited. Part of the cavity are also a polarization controller, a filter and an optical isolator. We also have a coupler which allows the extraction of 30% of the radiation to study the laser output. We now discuss the properties of the output laser pulses, starting from the spectrum. First, we notice that the starting solution has a broad plasmon resonance around 1150 nanometers. The pulse spectrum has a double feature at 1032 and 1033 nanometers. Here we can see the laser pulse characterization. We have an 11 MHz repetition rate, an output power greater than 5 milliwatts, and a pulse duration of 293 picoseconds. This brings me to the conclusions. So the main messages of these presentations are that silver nanoplates show strong saturable absorption. Silver nanoplates can be easily integrated into a fiber laser by optical deposition onto a fiber end. And we achieve the first time demonstration of a silver nanoplate based fiber laser 
that produces small locket pulses in the picosecond range with an output power greater than 5 milliwatts. So, thank you all for listening, and if you have any questions, please email me at this email address.